Hey everyone, Thossie here at the Plano District event here with 9128 8 Can Robotics, ranked eighth in this event so far and on the number two alliance as well. Really excited to talk about their amazing robot with a tilted elevator and amazing fast. It's fast, it's reliable, and also vision as well. Really excited to get down here, here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by our viewers, supporters, members, and also in partnership with the following. Animark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options through their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. Build your alliance with so many other FIRST alumni who go to Kettering University. Every student at Kettering experiences their cutting-edge co-op programs that seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds. Kettering co-ops are a fully immersive working experience at the leading edge of industry. Head on over to kettering.edu slash FIRST to learn more about their incredible programs and to get more information. Jonah, talk to me about your, your drivetrain that you guys have so far. Seems pretty fast and the wiring seems really neat. Talk to me about that. All right, so we have a 29.5 by 29.5 drivetrain. We use 50 swerve with 6.75 gear ratio. On our, uh, our wiring in our base is the Swift Canex system. We use it because it's very reliable and it's very, very, we haven't, no issues with it so far this competition. Um, it's very reliable. And we also like to put all electronics on the belly pan so that it's ease of access and it's less likely to break. Now to transition through, uh, from your drivetrain uh, talk me about the superstructure that you guys have. Rayon, t tell me more about that. All right, so for our, we use rev linear actuators to pivot our elevator to where we want. We use a two to one uh, gear ratio with our Kraken motors. We have uh, swift elevators on the top here. These are very reliable and very fast for us. They're called swift ascends. Uh, we also have a hang that I carried and built uh, let me just move this, can I move this back? Or like, yeah. Are you quickly able to see uh, this robot enabled and see the superstructure in motion? And then talk me through the process as the superstructure is moving. Yeah, so we have, as you can see, uh, two bearing blocks at the bottom that allow us to pivot our elevator. The same goes for our linear actuators. They're on the same uh, mounting point so that they don't pivot differently. Uh, the, these uh, linear actuators, they have lead screws that go through them. When they spin, they have a lot of torque and power behind them to be able to move this up and down. Yeah, are you able to see this, this mo the motion happen? Yeah. And these are our different scoring positions we have here. So you have the, the Swift Ascend as your elevator, essentially, with the rev linear actuators yes. as your tilt. So we have just one motor powering both of these. We both have a rod them. that goes through, and that connects with uh, two, two uh, teeth right here. And in the linear actuators, you can see that there's, well, I can't really lift it, but you can see that there's little holes at the bottom here that allow these teeth to dig into these and allow it to lift up as fast as possible. Now let's hit it. Let's give it back to Jonah to talk about your end effector that you guys have with your your trough uh, that's able to funnel all the core from the loading station, and then as well your algae that you have over here. All right, so I'll start with our uh, funnel. So we intake from the human player station. We do not do ground coral or ground algae. So one of our major goals of this year for our robot is to be as light as possible, which will touch more with the end effector. So our funnel is a singular bent polycarb plate uh, that is to reduce weight without having a max, uh, max tube to uh, like add more weight to the funnel. We cut this on our laser cutter, same with all of our other uh, machine parts. Uh, our funnel has been gone through many iterations and due to the pivoting elevator, gives us a, a better angle for our funnel so that way we can stay consistent and be very fast when we're scoring without have, uh, worrying about losing the uh, losing the coral. But one last thing I'd like to add about our funnel is that the funnel itself can almost in entirely passively intake the uh, the coral, but we have a, mo a motor here with, with the wheels on, on this uh, churro here that is in case it gets stuck or if it needs some help and assistance it shoots it through. 
Right. Should, can we talk about this little piece of cardboard over here? Yeah. So <laughs> over here we have an idler. We had some issues with the polycarp bending inwards, which would release the tension on the belt. So we added this idler and this piece of cardboard to prevent the belt from slipping. And ever since we put it on, we've had zero issues with it. Jonah, talking about this end effector that you have over here, right. you're able so, to see do coral over here, but also a massive part for algae. Yeah, so as I mentioned earlier, our whole goal of this season was that we have a super lightweight robot and one of the main reasons why we had a pivot on our robot was so that we didn't have to add any a pivot on our elevator to reduce that weight and that moment on the on our robot. So here we use the Mac composite plates which are mounted to this Max tube on top of our uh, elevators and we it's gone through many iterations. The mounting has changed over the, the course of the season but we, we figured out we have cross beams here that help support it so it stays rigid when we're in the air. So we have it's run on one motor at the top to further increase the uh, like make it more stable if it was farther out from the, uh, the outtake. So it powers this, these two uh, set of rollers. So this bottom roller will take care of the coral. So when the coral comes through the funnel, then it will just outtake it. And then that same direction, but a different button will um, will intake the algae. Then we have a button that outtakes the algae. And uh, the, uh, we can go to the barge due to the, uh, our very long um, ascent. So the sense. Yeah. Can we see that? In, can we see the mechanism in see, action? Uh, so, so then we can go up to level uh, two, three, and four. Um, you wanna rayon? Do you wanna take it out? Uh, can you take the coral out? Right. And then we also ha have the ability to intake the uh, algae. So can we put an algae in the robot? Then we can go up to the barge position uh, and score directly into the barge. Uh, you want to catch it? Now, one thing that we forgot to mention, Rayon, uh, talk about this climber that you have. Go into more details about how it works. Seems like it's kind of like the butterfly style with a mix of 118. Everybody, talk to me about that. Yeah, so over here, what powers all of this is a rev gearbox that is 100 to 1. It has a ratcheting system inside of it that is engaged with a servo. So the way it works is when it spins, the, the ratchet catches and this won't come up anymore. Uh, and the way we deploy this whole system, we have a spring right here. Uh, once, once this motor... Yeah. So as you can see, as this, as this motor turns, this spring pulls it down and it pivot, pivots on that uh, bearing block over there. We have a uh, we have a funnel right here. This uh, grabs our grabs the cage. So if it's spinning or moving in any way, we can instantly grab it and direct it into our grabber right here. So if you guys can pull it back out real quick. So uh, what we did here, uh, we just hammered a half inch hex through this one by one. That holds it really well. And we put bearing, bearings on these so that they can pivot very easily. These parts in the middle are 3D printed. It's to hold everything and keep su everything super light. Uh, so it just goes like this and grabs the cage instantly. These on the back, these fins here, this case the cage from string left and right and accidentally going back here, uh, which we did find a, uh, which we did find that was an issue. Uh, over here, we have these 90 degree angle uh, to keep to make sure this is as sturdy as possible. Now, let's hand it over to Abdullah. Talk, Abdullah, talk to me about the programming that goes on in this robot. I see you guys have two limelight pores over here. Talk to me about that. You have some auto aligning. What's going on? Yeah, so at the beginning of the season, whenever we were trying to do auto align, because we knew it was going to be a huge part of the game with all the refaces and all the precision. So originally, we only had one limelight on our robot, but we realized that the accuracy was, was off and we didn't want to deal with a lot of the ambiguity with 3D April tags. So we decided to put two limelights on there that are the correct distance apart. So the reef is 13 inches, uh, the poles are 13 inches away from each other. So we decided to have limelights that are that exact distance away. So that way we don't have to worry about ambiguity or nothing of that. And so- now, Can we see this? You see it, you have, a, you have an April tag set up. Can we see this auto line work? Yeah, so if you want, 
So if you want to come over here, one other cool thing that we have with our Ottawa line is that, um, so we have this stored state. And so what the operator does is, uh, what do you, whatever, whatever we want to auto line before we actually do the auto line, we decide what pipeline we like, what April tag we wanted to look at, what level we wanted to go, and what angle we wanted to go. So this way, all our driver has to do is press a single button, and then everything is set for them already, and they have to—they don't have to do any extra thinking. So now, if, uh, yeah. So if Jonah wants to try aligning now. So you can see that it it corrects it and then it also extends and so everything's really easy and it, allow, it allows us to have those really fast cycles. Um, you, go ahead. Yeah, one other thing that we found was pretty was very helpful, especially with tuning our elevators and everything, was that in our constants we have a enum for our superstructure with the pivots and elevators, and so all of our positions that we use are all here, and so whenever we need to choose, whenever we need to tune our our superstructure for the field based on field variation and all of that, we're able to do that really easily. Now I want to hand it over to Asia to talk about this amazing ITCAN program that you guys have. A big banner to talk about ITCAN. You also have an ITCAN girls team talking about this entire program you have. So here at It's Gone, our main goal is to, uh, our main goal is focusing to spread STEM to underrepresented and underserved communities in order to empower the future generation of STEM leaders. And we do this in a variety of ways, whether it's attending conventions, hosting camps and workshops, or even outreaches with communities that are under-resourced. So one of the main uh, important factors about our team is that we're a tuition-free program. This allows, this means that we don't want parents to come and spend money on um, allowing their kids to attend and be a part of a robotics team. We want them to realize that what we're doing at Ithmon is to make an impact and change and a, create a movement in the world and by doing this we allow them to gain uh, real life skills that they wouldn't join uh, th that they wouldn't gain on a traditional robotics team the most unique aspect about it one uh, as of this past season is our partnership with go baby go this uh, was an experience that our students had in which we modified toy ride on cars to allow children with limited mobility or even other disabilities to move independently for the first time in their lives being able to see the impact we created on these children children who thought they would never be able to experience such things was really life uh, life changing and heartwarming. And um, to summarize, our goal, along with uh, spreading STEM to these communities, is really making an impact in the world and creating as many teams as we can to really um, spread the mission and vision of FIRST. And so we attend national conventions every year where we showcase our team, um, uh, reach out to local um, local community leaders, board members, in order to establish the foundation of Ithcon throughout the world. Well, amazing program, amazing robot. Congratulations on your great success so far. I'm really excited to see you guys perform this playoff match. Congratulations, you guys, and good luck. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. Build your alliance with so many other FIRST alumni who go to Kettering University. Every student at Kettering experiences their cutting-edge co-op programs that seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds. Kettering co-ops are a fully immersive working experience at the leading edge of industry. Head on over to kettering.edu slash FIRST to learn more about their incredible programs and to get more information. Animark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions.